This all started from a very personal journey. You hear the term rite of passage a lot. I craved to be more connected to the outside world. I didn't really have words for what that looked like. I was in college and stumbled upon a book, Walk Across America by Peter Jenkins. Read that book in a day, skipped all my classes. I knew in my core of cores that walking across the U.S. was what it was what my soul needed at every level. And on March 1st of 2010, I left the Delaware coast and walked for uh, eight and a half months across the country. Correct. It's been a great first day. How do you feel? Like I said, day 12. It's day 167. It's day 188. It's day 241. This has been a life-changing experience. 242 days. Thousands of people, hundreds of towns and cities. The purest form of walking with people, uh, walking with this country, regardless of difference. And my walks here in Colorado and this organization was birthed out of very raw experience. When I started the meetup group, this was in 2012, some of my first walks were like, meet me at this coffee house at 8 a.m. for a 23-mile walk. Uh, nobody showed up. So we started as an experiment for human connection, moving at two to three miles an hour. And it's evolved into this beautiful community and a really creative social business. Starting with intention, starting with a circle so we know who we are and we move together 40 to 60 community connection-focused walks every week. And how do you help people feel safe and comfortable and connected and apart, um, even amidst and amongst differences? We've trained over 300 leaders, what we call walking movement leaders. We train them in maximizing human connection, celebrating how unique our backgrounds are, that we have the capacity to be in relationship with those who are different. We want to be a place where people can show up as they are, and to go into a group that doesn't think like me, they don't believe like me, and then letting those differences fumble out on a walk. It takes vulnerability to walk on the other side, whatever we deem that other side. When I did this long walk, it was eight and a half months of walking into complete difference and to be met with hospitality and with care across all these different lines that we've created. That space is what just lights me up. It's just pounded it into me that if we can be really honest and vulnerable about our own story and about our own pain and our own hardship and our own hopes and our own longings, the hardship of what other people carry becomes more human. Well, welcome everyone. I'm so glad to have you with us tonight. That's right. Yes. I'm so excited. So excited to introduce you to my friend Jonathan Stalls. I met Jonathan in October of 2019. I was on a transformative, uh, intense uh, week of anti racist training, racial identity development with Christina Cleveland. And I have to tell you that. Um, it was a one-two punch of Christina Cleveland's brilliance in teaching and then Jonathan's brilliance in helping us get the information kind of out of our heads, into our bodies, and doing these walks each day. And I was just so impressed. And uh, yeah, I really loved it. And so whenever we started kicking around ideas for what kind of a practice we would have for Lent, all the walking that we've all done, it just felt like a natural choice to say, you know, our, our, our practice this year is Lent, and we need Jonathan to talk a little bit with us about, you know, the, the spiritual practice of walking as a spiritual practice. And so I'm really excited to, uh, to learn from him tonight. Um, he's going to teach here for a little bit, and then we'll have some question and response a little bit later. So again, put those in the chat, and um, 
without further delay, here's my friend Jonathan Stalls. We're grateful to have you with us. Tonight. Blessings, brother. Blessings. Blessings. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's so it's so good to just be in flow with all of you, each of you, whoever is here, wherever this meets you. Fred, thank you for the invitation. Um, we did have we had a very special time together when we were all moving into these themes, and so I I, I would love wherever this meets you as as we lean in. It is let me first say it is always so odd to be talking about walking or unhurried human movement while sitting <laughs> or resting behind a screen. So we honor that we are bringing just, just words and glimpses into the world of movement that is outside of these walls, um, that we're planting seeds, beloveds. <laughs> um, so I'd love to just, just as Fred kind of said already in a small way, I'd love for us just wherever this meets you, just as we start, um, Let's just start by taking a couple just really good deep breaths, just right right where this meets you, um, just so we can kind of, this, this is a conversation on body-based movement. And so I want us to just be opening those channels where we're feeling a little more in our heart and in our bodies as we listen. So let's take a deep breath deeply in at your own pace just honoring your body, inviting movement from the mind to the heart, to the fingers and toes, deeply in. And slowly out. Let's do a couple more, one more deeply in. And slowly out. Breathe this one deep to the edges, stretching our veins and our neurons. Sweet. Great. So there is so much to say. There is so much that I could go. I, I could spend hours and hours and hours leaning in with each of you related to walking or human movement as a spiritual practice. And so I'm just gonna be planting seeds. We're just gonna be like touching the surface. But what's beautiful about this invitation is that there's going to be a lot flowing throughout uh, the Lenten journey, throughout the next several weeks alongside City Church and your community. So, I, I, you know, just, 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 be, just be open, just, we're, just whatever sticks, whatever lands, whatever feels, whatever feels right, we'll let that sit. Um, I first want to say too, I want to honor as I'm talking about walking in particular, as I'm talking about um, unhurried human movement, you're going to hear me say unhurried human movement a lot. You're going to hear me say just human movement, body movement, because this is so completely uh, inclusive to moving on a wheelchair, moving on a powered stroller, moving with a walker. Um, that it's not just bilateral two feet, that we're honoring our bodies as they are. Um, so just, just honor your body as it is as we move into these conversations and invitations. Honor your pace as it is. Honor your ability as it is. And just whatever your relationship is to, to whether it's one mile per hour to, so this isn't this isn't about distance always. This isn't about speed always. This is just your humble frame moving from place to place as we weave practice and invitation around it. I also want to honor um, and just really that we're all going to experience because this is so human, because it is so inherent to our design as human people, we're all going to experience it not only from a pace space but just from how we move through the world so with race gender lgbtqia trans non-binary however we move through the world we're going to experience walking outside of our walls and our screens differently entirely differently and i just i just want to honor those unique spaces uh, right where you are as we invite this practice um, and there's going to be just more permission and permissions and 
uh, seeds around that specifically throughout the weeks ahead as we think about some different themes alongside this. So we all have this default, whatever that is, to moving bilaterally or moving on a wheelchair. Um, a lot of it can feel maybe utilitarian. It could just be really basic. It could just be, maybe it's an activity you do for health or for fitness. Maybe it's just getting out and going from one place to the next place. Uh, you know, th the time that most of us spend actually tending and nurturing walking or human movement as a practice is very little and it's not it's just not common thought to think about all the benefits all the learning that can happen when we're moving this way and so i just i want to open us up just like the breathing deeply invitation i want us to really open towards how could i imagine whether it's restructuring whether it's and just really inviting new ways to tend and bring intention to something that beloved, beloved, beloveds, we are made to be doing. Our brains and our hearts and our bodies are made to be moving in this way, whether it's by foot or on a wheelchair, unhurried, outside of walls, under our true ceiling, tending with feet or our wheelchairs on the soil, the soft soil of the earth, regulating oxygen and blood in a more regulated way, in a more balanced way, moving through landscapes, moving next to each other, shoulder to shoulder and alongside, scanning our environment left to right. So there's so much, whether it's biological, environmental, relational, that is in our design. To, we are made to, so this isn't just, this isn't a gimmick. This isn't like some extra stuff that you got to download. This is just uncovering and exploring and, and, and just kind of digging into what's already here. Um, so I want to also alongside of this be intentional with, as we think about Lent as well. Um, what I love to weave into walking as a spiritual practice is the, just the inherent and intrinsic qualities of the inner and outer journey. That as we move, it's more natural for things on the inside to kind of bubble up and to move up to the surface. Thoughts, fears, dreams, joys, even pain, trauma, heavy things, wondrous things. And so these things can slowly make their way up when we protect time or when we have significant time to be moving the way we're made to. And so the inner journey starts to starts to move with our body's movement. And with that, we're also taking in information from the outside world that we are absorbing the outer world, absorbing it, not just in the mind, not just through words and concepts, but literally through the pores of our skin. We are absorbing our environments and the elements that are within our environments in all seasons in all spaces. And so there's something so powerful about this humble human frame. Sometimes I'm like, y'all, we just got this leaky bag of skin that we are moving in. And, and we're just trying to stay upright because really gravity wants us down. Gravity wants us down on the ground. I think about the root frame of humility, humus, earth soil down to the ground and so the, there's this really really beautiful i think and complex invitation especially thinking about lent ashes earth humility inner and outer journey and so this walking stance of humbly moving on the earth walking and or rolling humbly moving on the earth close to the soil but also taking that step or taking that move to stay upright to stay in to show up to be here to be alive and so I, I, there's so much in that space as we think about walking as and, and human movement as a spiritual practice that the very act in and of itself of us to bring more intention and more time to care for and tend to it is so much a practice in and of itself. So I've got these because we're doing, because this is uh, Zoom and 
and or screens and things i i like to just get random and <laughs> creative for things that i i would love to have have that that, that can stick because i'm going to say a lot of stuff and it may just kind of slide it may stick somewhere but there's some words i want you to take with you from from our time together that are going to that just that move through these different themes and i'm going to show them to you on ripped up cardboard pieces okay so unhurried i just want us to be with that we're just gonna i want you to be with this feel it breathe it in unhurried that's the first one and i'm gonna bring, we're gonna come back to these the second there's just three little cardboard pieces here we're not gonna get overwhelmed trees stones and skies trees stones and skies just feel that take that in this might seem really simple and in a lot of ways it is but it is not simple in the way we so many of us conduct our day to day and this last one is a little more complex has a little bit more going on but that participant word i want you to feel and invite participant you will see underneath that i have witness relationship and alive you'll notice up here that i have a moving participant witness relationship and alive and so we're going to come back to each of those but i'm going to repeat them a couple more times so those stick so as i shared the intrinsic nature of us moving in an unhurried way where we're not rushed our proximity to the outside world the inner and the outer journey and so getting specific to that let's break that down proximity to trees and to plants and to the natural world to other human beings to critters to creation to spirit to sky to wonder to galaxy to mystery to god to all these things that are within what we will never be able to fully comprehend we can't fully see around the next corner of the building we can't fully see or understand what's beyond the next horizon but our very movement honors and and can, can honor and connect to and is in constant proximity to these to these magical teachers in our midst stones i think about stones also um, one of the practices that i love you know and i'm going to sprinkle some different small practices as we're talking here one of the practices that i love related to walking as a spiritual practice and for those of you some of you might be aware of the camino de santiago in spain um, there's a lot of that happening there, especially alongside various pilgrimage practices. But one of the one of the practices I love is just carrying a stone or carrying several stones with you and having those stones represent a wide variety of intentions. And so I, I personally call them intention stones. And so as you move a stone that you might pick up while you're moving or a stone that you bring with you, and it might represent something that you've been carrying, the weight of something that you've been carrying and the intention for your walk or the intention for a, a series of walks over the course of several weeks is to, is to eventually or to be in relationship maybe to release that stone. Sometimes the stone can, can resemble, I, I, I need to get rid of this weight. And so that stone is something you eventually just launch across the lake, maybe not towards someone's house, but I'm just saying these stones can represent things that you're carrying, things that you're holding. They can also represent dreams. They can also represent just, just, just flavors and elements of joy and passion and love. Some of you might have heard of a lot of what goes on all over the place, these painted rocks. This is something that's so good with kids and families where you can just paint these rocks with messages of hope, love, justice, dignity, flowers, images. They don't even have to have words. And you just leave these little gifts as you make your way across whatever street you're on, whatever, whatever space you're moving through. And so I want to go back to this because I'm, I'm, I'm framing it out a little bit, but this trees, stones, and skies. So as we think about walking as a spiritual practice that the unhurried movement in and of itself when we bring intention to it when we give ourselves time to do it when we 
add those layers of presence that that we can more naturally connect and and touch the trees and notice the details of the bark that we can actually see the spiraling branch as it reaches in the spaces between to get more air and light and oxygen you know, just all of these things that these trees resemble as permissions for each of us to be resilient to be rooted to be reaching into the spaces between for more nourishment there is so much there's so much about trees y'all there's so much about rocks there's so much about sky all the things so we're holding that we're honoring that as a part of this practice that as we make time as we move out into the world that we are naturally making more intentional time to be in relationship with creation itself and all that it has to teach us when I talk about, and when I show this one, the sign of, per, of participant, moving participant, witness, relationship, alive. I keep thinking about there's so much around all of us that wants to separate us from each other, that wants to separate us from the natural world, that wants to slice and dice even our own thoughts and the things that we say to ourselves in so many moments of the day. So there's all this stuff at work. And I even think about the walls and this very screen even, the things that are working to separate us from the natural elements or from maybe our natural or more natural way of moving through the world. I would even say separating us from movement itself in a lot of ways. And so, you think about separation, but I also want to add superiority to that as well, that there's so much at work making us think that we are superior based off of any number of things. And so, so all these things are at work to say, well, I'm better than you because of this, or you're this and that, or, or I don't, you know, this wall is dividing us. And so therefore I don't, you know, and so when we are moving through the world humbly on our two feet or on a wheelchair, back to this unhurried nature, the humus, the humility of this practice. We are active participants, actively moving and available to be in relationship with all kinds of human beings, where that thread of, oh, 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 actually, wait, you, you, at some point, you are me and I am you. That your body is moving on that other side of the street. And if something happens on the street, if, if there's a car accident or if there's, if I slip and fall, there's things that happen that, that are beyond us ever knowing they might happen that, are, that will force us together to need each other, to see where we can come together, that we can't at least as much have so much separating us and thinking that we are separate from each other. And so I, uh, you know, I connect that to the planet as well because so much harm is being done to our planet because there's all these ideas that we are separate from it, that we can continue taking from it because it's not going to affect us because we can control the temperatures in here. We can, we can, we can kind of manipulate the idea that we have control. So there's a lot there. I know I'm, I know I'm getting into some things here. Stay with me. Um, we're, I, I hope there's some questions brewing about just practice, this big theme of walking as a practice. But what I'm, what I'm leaning into is this unhurried approach to moving our bodies in the worlds around us. Proximity to the natural world, to trees, to stones, to the mystery of the sky. And the essence of being an active, moving participant. A lot of my work is connected to um, one of the branches out of Intrinsic Paths, which is my creative project and how I, I'm, I often refer to myself as a walking artist. Um, in the video you saw, it was Walk to Connect Co-op. That's one of the branches that comes out of the tree. The other branch that's pretty significant in these times for me right now is called Pedestrian Dignity. And so, so much of my work, and I very much consider this a spiritual practice, as the word says in one of those um, in one of the boards under participant you saw witness and so so much of my movement through the world when i'm walking is being a witness to 
to my surroundings, but def but specifically filtering people that have no choice but to be moving this way. So people who cannot drive, choose not to drive, aren't legally allowed to drive, and all the things, right? So then you add nighttime, you add all the different weather conditions, you add all the different things. And so when we move through these landscapes, this witnessing of what what are what are people what do people have to go through every single hour of the day to feel connected to their body to feel uh, that might be impacting their ability to connect to their body that might be impacting their ability to feel connected to other people that might be impacting their and or our ability to feel connected to the natural world that we built so many of our environments centered around the automobile pavement walls speed and so pedestrian dignity is is such a huge part of my work and i connect it to spiritual practice because it feels like a stewarding so not only are we moving through the world inviting the wisdom of the trees and the way the branches sing and reach and the way the sunset speaks to transition and rest but we're also inviting participation and stewardship over village, over community, over, wow, this intersection, this public housing site and or this community that's living here and that grocery store is over there and it's so violent to cross this street all hours of the day. What are we doing to the human condition? What's, what's, what's calling us out of our walls and out of our screens to literally, and I think about Peace Pilgrim, I, I don't know if you've heard of the Peace Pilgrim, this was this inspiring woman in her 80s who walked mostly in silence. Also Planet Walker, this incredible black man who walked mostly in silence. These, these two amazing writers and examples of people that comb, like they would both use the language of combing the earth, that this combing, you're, you're with your body combing a neighborhood with your presence and participation with your with your awareness and listening and stewardship with your unhurried breathing and tending and maybe prayer and listening that you're available to the mysteries and the spontaneous and the things that show up that you're available to the spring blossoming flowers and the details of what bees have made it to, you know, you are just, just in your own way, imperfectly, we are all fumbling through this. <laughs> there is no, there's no perfection in any of this, but in some ways walking or unhurried human movement as a spiritual practice is more about what do I need to remove or take, take away so that I can just take a 15, 20 minute walk that is present and unhurried, that helps me look deeper into the trees and the way this branch broke off, but the way the wound is healing, it's speaking to me about wounds and healing. And now I'm available to help someone carry their groceries up to their, I'm not in a rush, I'm not darting, I'm not bypassing. I'm literally making myself available to the practice of participation. There's so much, y'all. Thank you for being with me in this space. Um, another thing that comes up and it's connected again, I'm going to show you all this again, because, you know, when you all go out walking or moving in your own way, I want you to take these with you unhurried trees stones and skies i know this is these are these are these are simple terms when you look at them but they are not simple when it comes to great teachers in the practice i want us to focus on this word right here moving and then i want us to i want us to look at alive that our bodies when we give ourselves permission to move that we, I have a, a, a practice that I'll be sharing. So throughout the next six weeks, I'm going to be tagging and linking different practices that you can take with you around some of these specific things. Um, but it's called movement forward. 
And so I think about in another practice that's alongside of that is called brave creativity. So these two practices work together a lot, but there's just this, like, how can we, how can we evolve as a species? How can we emerge as a species if we are not more often in movement, like in actual movement? So I think about the physiological nature of sitting <laughs> like this inside of a wall behind a screen. Yeah, it's again, I want us all as a collective, as a big old beloved circle to be out moving together as I'm saying all these things that our actual kinetic wisdom is, is literally on all of its edges, trying to help us, trying to call us out of our walls and screens so that we can be, so that we can be moved, literally physically moving forward and learning and honoring our past, being present and humble in our present and being open and emergent and attentive to what is ahead. And so, and creative, and to have the, to, to envision, to even be able to even be able to have the space to envision and to be creative. There's so much science in the neural network of what happens when we move by foot or when we're out unhurried in an unhurried way. And all the things that fire, the actual space that is created in the brain after 15 or 20 minutes of walking. So I can't stress enough for people who are just, you know, desiring or seeking creative ways to be creative, ways to feel unstuck, ways to discern with a partner or a family, a big decision that the practice, like weave in a walking practice with intention. Don't put too many lines around it. Don't put too many expectations around it but bring intention that, you know what? Okay, let's, let's move together around this theme. Let's move together around this topic. Let's move together around this conflict. One of the things that I'll be sharing more in detail kind of midway through our six week time together um, is the specific practice of walking with a loved one or walking with someone at your side, someone maybe you disagree with, someone maybe that you're in conflict with, someone that you might not understand. And so if you visualize it, the shoulder to shoulder, side by side, moving forward under our big, big, big ceiling, this galactic now we dropping stuff on Mars ceiling. <laughs> we are doing what we can human community and we are clueless and so it's just the humility of like okay how can we be available to the great mystery to spirit to what god is speaking to what she's wanting us to, to what she's trying to draw out of us and in us and in between us so I think, you know, when we're on screen or when we're sitting at a desk or a coffee place or a restaurant or even just at the dinner table or just, you know, there's 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 always room and needed time for that kind of face to face. All right, beloved. How are you? I love you. But then also thinking about how often are we positioning our physiological frame? to be to physiologically be alongside moving forward together as an actual pattern and practice to help us evolve and move forward together and to show that we are alongside of each other so i'm always encouraging and again i'll go into more detail around this uh, as we move into these practices throughout the next six weeks but it's a, there's so much there around how we evolve and how we use movement to remind us of being alive that we feel alive because we're more at least we feel more alive because we're in movement that our blood is always pumping and moving that our lungs are always stretching and breathing that our bodies are these radiant magical things that are, we are we are constantly shedding and so movement helps us shed what no longer serves There's so much. So 
I'm going to share just for a couple minutes and then we're going to just open it up because I know I'm just touching stuff, y'all. I'm touching all the things <laughs> and I hope I'm grateful you are with me. Um, I call these things practice ecosystems and I shared, I was starting to share about it a little bit, the ecosystem of other, walking with, um, alongside, being next to someone. Um, the ecosystems that we're going to move through the next six weeks, we're going to have two weeks focused on self or solo. So thinking about the practice of what if I just if I can, I just protect 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, maybe an entire Saturday. I'm always telling folks, I'm like, y'all, if you are able and if you can, you know, you've got that San Francisco. What is it? The crosstown trail 17 miles that might be a lot but you could break that up <laughs> i'm always like take a weekend and walk to the state line take a 10 mi most of the world moves 8 to 10 miles a day it is unique i mean you all are so the city people are you all are probably walking a lot more than many but to just literally commit an entire saturday or an entire weekend to just moving by foot to see what opens and blossoms I'm always talking about pilgrimage and rite of passage, that how we can use walking as a spiritual practice to move us into our edges and into the spaces between the places we are frightened to go, both on the inside and on the outside. It's humble. It's attentive. It's open. We're not rushing. We're not, we're not bypassing. We're, 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 we're tending. We're opening. We're listening. One step, one roll at a time. We're resting. We're breathing. We're regulating. The second ecosystem I talked about being alongside. And then the final one is with groups and collectives to have a body of people moving again in this fashion as a practice. So a lot of times I encourage that uh, groups, especially groups that are leaning into spiritual traditions and faith, and they're kind of this really complex, mysterious, wondrous place of faith and belief and trust and hope and even grief and pain and leaning on each other. That a lot of times I encourage as practice with collectives, but this can be with two people, it can obviously be solo, but to move together in stillness or in silence and to just have maybe it's prompts on paper that you read to kind of guide. And you it might be weird at first to have a group of 12 or six moving together as a body without speaking but there's all this wisdom happening. You're more attentive to what's, what's coming in from outside. You're, you're, you're moving with these other bodies and peers at, at the level of the heart, at the level of the kinetic stance. And there's something so powerful about coming back to a circle after moving with a collective when few words have been spoken, but so much has happened and then to express and share in words. And so again, I'll share more of those things later and throughout, but there is so much. And so it is eight for it's, what is it? My time I'm in Denver, Colorado. So it's eight 41. I want to open it up to questions or things that have come up. I hope <laughs> there we go. Right. On. All right, Jonathan. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, brother. Yes. I hate, I really, I hate to like have you stop because I, I know how you go, you know, the flow starts yes. rolling and uh, I know how much I loved learning a lot of these things as we were walking, like you would talk about stones and we'd pick them up, you know, and, and we'd talk about yeah. them. So all real good. Okay. A couple of questions have come in and, you know, feel free to keep on asking everyone. As Jonathan's mentioned, we're going to be hearing more from him to help us on our guided walks. Um, over the next six weeks. But the first one is, how do you feel your identity as a queer person of faith has influenced your spiritual practices and journey, especially during seasons like Lent? What are one or two things that you reflect on the most? Hmm. Oh, I love that question. Thank you for that. Hmm. You know, when I was talking about Oh, there's, I could, there's so much there. Woo. Uh, I, I would say the things that are coming up just right away. You know, when I was talking earlier about that twisting branch on a tree, mm -hmm. y'all, 
y'all i can't even i can't even you know i know you know we got tree tree hugging yes all that goodness but i like the way these some of these branches twist out the way i peer and rest on trees and look at trees as permission to be so radically colorful reaching mm -hmm. and bending and twisting to let that color guide uh guide me um and just to seek the natural world for that permission just that ongoing permission to just let the color out let the feelings come out let the the truth telling come out let the let the the tears and the rage and the joy and the expression and the dance so i just would say like my my identity has been and continues to be just shaped by how I see queer LGBTQ spaces between reality and the natural world mirroring back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to me, it, one of the practices that I'll be sharing with you all just it's called nature sees us. And I just I just believe that I, I, that that the, the tree is actually looking at me. Um, mm. I love that because I see it as a God, like as a God created being that is uh that is connecting so anyway i could talk thank you for that question um but practice in the natural world is is what helps me to connect with that identity so much i remember in our walking we were in uh, north carolina in montreat and you told us to actually look for trees that had gone through quite a bit of struggle to yeah. survive and yeah. to not only survive yeah. but thrive and yeah. uh, one particular tree on that one river we walked on that this tree could not grow straight up. It had to go sideways and yes. curve around. And it was actually an incredibly strong tree, but it just wasn't the same as every tree. And yes. um, that just came up for me thinking about um, what it might, for those who identify as a queer person of faith and how this has influenced yeah. their spiritual journey and practices and those trees and how they broke barriers mm -hmm. as all That's of right. our beloved siblings in the queer community teach us so it's beautiful yes. thank you for that yes a uh, second question how does one become trained as a walking guide hmm. i love it oh my gosh lots of ways uh, well so we have uh at, at walk to connect co-op so mm -hmm. if you just visit their the website our website um right now because of covid we've just it's it's an online training right now but we have kind of a it's a co-op very grassroots it's a staff team that after you go through the training um which just which is just really like it's a series of invitations for safely and comfortably hosting a group thinking about different things you might encounter related to intersections and different kinds of streets and the way they're built um, thinking about maximizing connection and helping people feel seen with whatever needs they have and not because a lot of times when you get into these groups, you know, you can kind of it's easy to just kind of get into the activity and not honor right. what the needs are of the unique group. And so there's just things like that in that training. Um, and then just reach out to me after you take that training, sir, find a way to circle up with me or one of our co-op our co-op owners and and we'll just support you to think about how it makes sense because we're in this COVID-19 tricky regulations around group events, public events, but so it really just depends on what you're imagining and who you're imagining inviting. Um, yeah. We've got a couple things coming up where we're adapting a little bit. We're calling them movement circles where they're just limited to kind of four to eight people that you commit to walking with uh, I know we planted some seeds uh, with Fred, with the church as well as thoughts on like, oh, what could it look like to have these these small circles that are kind of committing to move through different neighborhoods together, trails together, or maybe the same route because maybe everyone lives close to each other and that's a way they can get connected. So lots of ways. Great. I know that was a really helpful answer to those who are asking that. Um, here's a really good one that I think is important. Um, does uh, the the way the question is phrased is does spiritual walking happen only in silence oh my gosh mm. <clears throat> i uh <laughs> i i personally have so much energy around 
both how walking and or unheard movement can be deepened with more silence. So mm -hmm. I, I really feel like we have so much room to really be on different various threads of journeys in the desert, right? Like, what does that look like for me to just go out for an hour and not have not have earphones in, not have, yeah. not need yeah. to speak to, not be scrolling through that thing. Just <laughs> my humble frame. Guilty. Fragile, <laughs> I know me too. I'm not, I don't pretend to be outside of that. That's why I get yeah. loud. Cause I'm talking to myself y'all, but like this to just be a humble mm. observant. So it not, it may not be silent around you in terms of noises, public life, but you are you are in a moving stance of silence in terms of the the information you're taking you're you're absorbing it in a more intentional way and so then i think alongside of that i also to that question because i really appreciate it i think there is i think there is so much room to have spiritual walking or unhurried movement practice be in relationship to what is real so I, I, and what I mean by that, I, that doesn't mean silence isn't real, but I, what I'm saying is, let's say you live near, uh, what's one of your like popular arterial streets? I think it's like third street maybe, or Greer, is it Greery? Gre Geary, that's the yeah. name. Geary, thank you. So yeah. you might live near one of those streets. And so moving for you right outside the front door, this, it's loud, it's not, it's, or it's, 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 it's violent even. And so yeah. the practice of tending to and stewarding an environment as it is and observing it, caring for it, listening to what people go through, what you go through is, and how you might advocate, story tell for something different. I just, I think the public life, uh, one of my teachers, Richard Rohr, is, uh, you know, I, I, I respect a lot of his, One of the things he talks about is devoted life, simple life, and public life. Ooh, and I, nice. I feel like those three threads touch a lot of the, the, the wide embrace of spiritual practice. Repeat those again. Uh, devoted life. So how could yeah. a walking or movement practice be devoted? A simple life. A, a, a practice being simple and how do, how we do that. And then a public life, an engaged life, one that's not just going to the retreat center to have spiritual practice, but doesn't mean that isn't also, but it's also as I walk against the, the cars spraying me on the busy street because there's wisdom in a story here about where we're going. Mm -hmm. Um, and how do we get there? And how do we love each other there? And whew, yeah, it's a great question. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, what does your pre-walk routine look like? And yeah. related, how do you prepare for your spiritual walk? So I guess that's all one kind of big question about pre-walk routine. How do you prepare? Yeah, thank you so much for that question. I was going to get into that a little bit, too. I'm grateful you asked that. Um, yeah, comfort and safety are so important. So again, it's just the filtering of being so this is so unique to each of us, however we move through the world. And so I think um, for me personally, but then I, I, I'll keep it a little bit general where I think it could really work or help for most. You know, one of the things that um, I really like to have a, you know, always when I'm going out, even if it's just practical walking where I'm just commuting to to and from places, you know, always having water, always having uh, more than enough layers for how the elements change. So I just feel more relaxed knowing that I have a couple layers in a small backpack with me, mm -hmm. a backpack that's comfortable. So if you think about it, you're investing if you can, just like you invest in other forms of transportation, you're investing in or you're maybe saving for how to make your stuff. So having multiple layers of clothes, I'm always encouraging non-cotton because cotton picks up sweat, it sticks, it holds to the body. And so it doesn't really regulate breathing. So anything that's non-cotton, if you can get it, um, mm -hmm. and they la it lasts a long time, really working on comfortable shoes, shoes that feel good. I would lean to waterproof just so you have that extra 
extra cushions. So it really depends for each body type, but having, having water, something that can carry water, something that can carry and support layers, having some little snacks that are, that are with you, these little things, I always, um, you know, when I think about if I'm going out and really specifically doing practice based, I always have a little journal, something to write with in my pocket that, cause ideas are constantly coming up. I'm constantly creating because I'm constantly walking and using this as a practice. And so how I can, you know, have things that can aid that creative brainstorming mm. is really helpful. Um, the other little thing is a small little first aid kit. Um, I think having some band-aids, some Advil, whatever, whatever you want to use, it could be an herbal first aid kit of just different things that help to nurture the body. If there's any kind of pain or discomfort, um, yeah. can be, can be really good too. And then just waterproof stuff maybe. So we could go on that train for a long time, but it's a great question just around, you know, what could I invest in? to help me to make it easier for me to make this more a part of my everyday. And it makes me think, I'll just add a little asterisk to that question because I, it makes me think of another practice or something that's really practical. You know, if driving is your primary form of transportation, or let's just say using transit or another form is to think about a new relationship to where you park or where you get off the train or where it's like, uh, invite a practical way of building in or in weaving and walking or unhurried movement practice just by expanding out your your parking or exiting uh, relationship. So let's say my destination is here. I'm going to start intentionally uh, parking or getting out of the train or whatever 15 to 20 minutes outside. So you you almost move with this one mile or 15 minute radius around wherever it is you're going so that you can bring yourself into just this you know you you bring yourself into walking into wherever you're going and then walking out that you're 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 allowing your body to kind of regulate yeah. itself you're not going from one thing to the next you're not just transacting it's so many of these strip malls that we have in the country have done such a number on our drive in, park it out. I love Rebecca Solnit. She's an author of the book called Wanderlust, A History of Walking. And one of my favorite quotes of hers is, we go from one interior to the next, one interior to the next. In you know, and again, you know, you all are in San Francisco, a lot of you might not have cars, but it's even still with transit, how do I have a 15, 20 minute radius relationship to, if I don't have a lot of time in the day to make room for some of this practice, I can build it into my practical trips. Yeah. Yeah. That's really great. Cause it's, you know, um, it's that intentionality about it when the walking and slowing down and taking in life on a slower pace is not just something you, you just you don't rush all day long and then decide now I'm going to go take a walk and slow down. But you actually right. are starting to weave it into yes. the way you move in this world. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Boy, I need to hear that. That's great. What about your post walk routine? Anything in particular that comes to mind? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I so I did I didn't mention and it's connected to that and that first question. Um, I think it's you know, stretching can be so helpful. Um, you know, there's some good shin stretch stretches, but this is, I find it's especially great, but it's good before too, but definitely after just mm -hmm. doing some light stretching, rolling the ankle. There's a stretch where if, you know, if you do, if you do move bilaterally and you're moving on your feet where you you put your toes and you stretch the shin splint right there and that's an amazing stretch especially if you're interested in longer distance walking so if you are if you're energized by the idea of 8 10 12 mile walks on any given day as a way of moving through the world and listening and processing or writing and creating you really having those stretches uh, are really important because you can tighten up quickly so uh, usually finishing with a lot with water. I do I do not do good with water, <laughs> but I but it is a really important thing, and I notice the difference when I do. Um, and then just time to stretch, uh, and and usually then that stretching time also helps me to catch up and to honor and revisit things I noticed on the walk. 
Um, I personally really, really love taking photos on walks and sharing them. Um, yeah, I was, and so, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, let's talk about that for a sec. Yeah, I just love it. I love inviting people into all the wisdom that's in a mm -hmm. small budding seed of a yucca plant, I, you know, whatever it is, I just, it, it taking photos helps to draw me in even closer. And I get a lot of energy from sharing that. So a lot of my post walking routines are often stretching, drinking water when I'm, when I'm doing it. And then, um, and then tending to photos to kind of relive and remind myself of what I saw and to just carry those moments with me a little more and to share them. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Here's a unexpected question for you. That's not on the, uh, has been asked it's yeah. from my mind. I just want people to hear this. So how much did you walk today? Oh yeah, it was, uh, so it was, it was about 14 miles today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I just, I block it out in my calendar, y'all. Like I literally say, this is a walking practice, creative brainstorming day, or it's a, it's a, it's a protected. And then I have, I mean, I have hundreds of routes. Sometimes I don't use a formal route and I just, I just, you know, get out and go. I mean, I think, you know, you will have that, uh, that crosstown trail, but you also have, I mean, there's so many ways to adapt it and just make these different relationships to how you move. Yeah. Um, so it's a common thing. Yeah, it's about eight to 12 miles a day though for me. So that's a pretty standard, that can be can be fairly standard. <laughs> okay, here's yeah. one more that's also from my brain. Um, yes. How does exercise, like your goal to be like doing stairs, there's so many amazing stairs in the city that I do and other people do that oh. as their cardio. I mean, you, this doesn't get in the way of that. You can weave all of that into it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think the it's it's just the 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 toolkit of intention that we can bring to things that we're either already doing. I think that like the practical mm -hmm. like trips, you know, one of the things I'm always saying is if you have a practical trip or a practical exercise activity somewhere that you know near whatever and you're using something else other than walking to get there start like just practice replacing it yeah oh it's like four miles away and obviously we're filtering ability and safety mm -hmm. and comfort sure. and all the things so I'm, I'm i'm this is a loose invitation but that we you know experiment with replacing these default trips and and be like curious like the practice of like you were like you said just weaving something like that into mm -hmm. some of these other tools uh, of an, of intention bef before it and after it and all of that. Yeah. Great. All right. So time is up. We're at eight o'clock. I just want to thank you, Jonathan, so much for being with us. Um, yeah. So here's where you're going to hear more from Jonathan. I know there was a question in the chat about what medium are we going to be experiencing Jonathan in the coming days. So what's going to happen? And Jason, um, you can tell me off air here um, or on air. If you want to, your voice wants to be heard. <laughs> if I'm getting all this right. But what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be hearing um, short videos from Jonathan um, each Sunday of Lent during our worship service. And then um, you will be also be uh, receiving um, the kind of the, the weekly podcast. So there'll be a, a podcast for week one of Lent, a podcast for week two, week three, four, five, and six. Uh, first two weeks, are gonna, we're going to encourage solo walking, so the podcast will be geared for that. Um, it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world if you walk with somebody too, but that's the idea. And then walking with another person, some significant person in your life, um, for weeks three and four, and then weeks five and six, we're going to get back to you more on this, but we're going to be making sure that you get um, some good instruction about how we might gather together as groups as well. Jason's putting on their weekly email on Friday afternoon with the podcast video plus PDF resources. So um, you'll it'll be real obvious and you'll be getting all these things sent to you and, um, and you'll be seeing them on Sunday as well. So I think we're going to have a really great experience as a community um, taking in these uh, this walking practice during the season of Lent. Um, also, just to let you know, we have a great sermon series for Lent emphasizing God's faithfulness to us. Um, it's kind of an awkward title again and again, 
but it's emphasizing that God meets us, comes to us, um, never gives up on us again and again. Feels like a really timely message as we um, are entering into our second Lent of this pandemic. Um, so all that to say, we're really glad you could join us tonight. Uh, great mm -hmm. to have so many folks joining us on YouTube as well as Facebook and Twitter and Twitch, whatever the medium is for you. We're just really glad to have you with us. Jonathan, we look forward to hearing more from you and thank you for your time tonight. And uh, we'll see you all in the coming days. So yes, uh, blessings. Thank you all. Peace. Peace.